السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. ما شاء الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. We praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى. We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. His companions, his household. May Allah bless them, bless every one of us, grant us goodness. And give us the best of homes and families. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant solution to those who are looking for solutions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant ease to those who are struggling with any form of difficulty. Be it in the family unit or outside of that family unit in whatever way it may be. May Allah grant cure to those who are sick and ill. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon those who have passed on. Ameen. My brothers and sisters, that wa alaykum as salam when I first got up here was very, very encouraging. One of the reasons why I'm here at ELM, mashallah, when we speak, people respond. And that's very good for the speaker because at least you don't feel like you're just speaking to a wall, mashallah, but rather you're speaking to brothers and sisters who love each other for the sake of Allah. I feel the love, mashallah. And I felt it. There were brothers here saying, can I take a picture and can I not take a picture and so on? Can I greet and can I shake and can I hug, etc. My brothers and sisters, that is not always possible, number one. Number two is, that's not going to get you any closer to Jannatul Firdaus. I'm sure you know that. I always say, you take a picture with any sheikh or anyone, you cannot show an angel that and say, listen, have a picture with this guy. You got to let me through here, you know, <laughs> not at all. But mashallah, there is to a certain extent excitement amongst people sometimes. If you'd like, the most intelligent of the lot are those who sit where they are, turn around and take that selfie from where they are seated and they don't need to ask anyone about anything. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Similarly, I heard one brother saying, I'd like to be like you. And someone sometimes say, I'd like to, my children to be like you. And I say, you're aiming very low. You've got to aim much higher than a guy like me. A guy like me, subhanAllah. You've got to aim higher for the Sahaba radiallahu anhum and the likes. The true heroes are those who've passed on. And their record is already, subhanAllah, for us to see. The companions of the Prophet ﷺ were chosen by Allah Almighty Himself. Anyway, the topic this evening is towards a happy family, mashallah. We're searching for happiness, for contentment, for goodness, for success. Guess who is the owner of all those? Who is the owner of all those? Allah. Allah. So if you'd like all of that, primarily you start off by knocking the right door. If you happen to search for happiness, goodness, contentment, success, money, who doesn't want money? Everyone wants money, right? Who wants money? Put up your hand. MashaAllah. Those who don't, come hand it over here. ELM needs it, MashaAllah. ELM needs it. Barakallah feekum. They are doing some good work. Alhamdulillah. So everyone wants wealth. Everyone wants success. Everyone wants good health. Everyone wants everything nice. All those nice things, the owner of them is Allah. Develop your relationship with Allah. Develop your relationship with the word of Allah. It's the first step to your success and it's the first step towards a happy family you need to develop a relationship with allah so what happens i'm always inspired by a specific hadith of the prophet i mentioned it in this masjid and i'm going to repeat it again today so that beautiful narration is where the prophet tells us something after he was asked a question by his companions they asked him a question very powerful question before i get to the question what's your aim what's my aim ultimately where do we want to reach can you tell me jannatul firdaus it means paradise ultimately i want to reach paradise i i tell you something moments ago i was in north london I wanted to reach this masjid. What did I do? What do you think I did? I was driving by the way. What do you think I did? Do I know London? GPS. The brother says GPS. He is 100% spot on. It's called Tom. Tom. But there's a lady speaking. I don't know. <laughs> Confusing, right? My brothers and sisters, that's exactly what I did. East. As soon as I said East London, one of the first drop downs was East London Mosque. Wow, it goes to show how many people actually come to the masjid. It's a good thing. The first drop down is East London Mosque. 
And I clicked on it and it started showing me, right? When I missed one turn, it showed me what to do. You need to do this and now go back and come back onto this road. You know why? I'm trying to get somewhere. I made a little mistake. Perhaps we were talking. It was quite busy. The traffic was a lot at this time of the day. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, we have something more serious than a navigation system that will take you straight to your ultimate goal, which you all said is paradise. And that is the word of Allah. Allah tells you turn left, you turn left, you turn right, you turn right, go straight, you go straight, stop, you stop, go back, you go back, make a U-turn, you make a U-turn. But the problem is we don't turn on that GPS. The GPS is such that it actually tells you speed trap ahead. Wow, subhanallah, you know what's going on. You want that happiness. There is a tom-tom showing you the happiness. In fact, we cannot even call it a tom-tom. We need to call it words of guidance. There is a direction straight. It will lead you to a specific goal. And you know that. But the problem is, you know, we're too engrossed in the world. Let me tell you, there is a balance between this dunya and the akhirah. This worldly life and the hereafter. There is a beautiful balance. Those who tell you to divorce yourself from this world have not understood the world. And those who tell you to enjoy it to the degree that you've forgotten where you're going to go have also not understood the reality of the world. Allah says when he speaks about a dua, a prayer, a supplication that is to be made. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَقُولُ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ أُولَئِكَ لَهُمْ نَصِيبٌ مِمَّا كَسَبُوا وَاللَّهُ سَرِيعُ الْحِسَابِ from among the people, they are those whom when they call out to Allah, they strike the balance between this life and the next life. So they say, oh our Lord, grant us goodness in this world. That's the beginning of the dua. Amazing, you know, man is such that we want the goodness of this world first. And Allah says, we will give you the goodness of this world. We will give you the goodness of this world. Not necessarily what you think is your goodness. I was speaking to some brothers today. And I want to ask all of you within yourselves to look within yourselves and see. Do you know that if sometimes if the plan you had for your own life was granted exactly as you wanted it, perhaps you would not have seen the, the successes that you have seen as a result of doors being closed by Allah for you. You need to be happy. Where are you today? Sometimes you're sitting, you've got your own business and you're doing well. But you were fired from a job just three years ago. Subhanallah. That was not firing. That was Allah closing the door to say, I think you can do better on your own. Subhanallah. And we got depressed. I lost the job. Allah says, why are you getting depressed? Pick up the pieces. It was not in your hands or it might have been to a small degree according to our allowance. And you know what? That would be something positive the affairs of a true believer are amazing they can never be negative they are always good when something happens your way say alhamdulillah when it doesn't happen your way say alhamdulillah twice because it's happened the way allah wanted it anyway it's amazing don't become despondent. I was saying we're searching for Jannah to Firdaus. The owner of the Jannah is Allah. He's shown us the path, but we're not prepared to turn it on. Why? We haven't yet read the Quran with its meaning. We haven't yet understood it. We haven't bothered to put it into practice. We haven't bothered to become good people. Now let's get back to that hadith I was saying, one of my favorite. So the Prophet ﷺ was asked, what are the characteristics of those who are in Jannah, those in paradise? What would be the reasons that got them into paradise? Wouldn't you like to know that? A person who won a match or a race or an examination, a person who passed with flying colors, and if you needed to get to that position, wouldn't you like to have a meeting with them to say, how did you get to where you've got to? Please let me know. And then they'll tell you, I did this, I did this, and I did this. You have to do that. Because if you're looking at someone as a role model, someone somewhere you want to be, you need to know what they did to get there so that you can actually get there too. The people of Jannah, in Jannah, I want to know how did they get there? Why? Because I want to do that. 
So do you think the Prophet ﷺ gave a long lecture and he told them because getting Jannah is my main goal and yours, getting paradise. Did he give them a long lecture? No, he just said two words. Two words, do you know what they were? Taqwa Allahi wa husnul khuluqi. Chapter closed and hadith ended. You need two things. The people of Jannah have two qualities, main, predominant. What are they? The consciousness of Allah, meaning the relationship with Allah. And secondly, greatness in character and conduct, meaning the relationship with the rest of the creatures of the same Allah. We've always spoken about this. So if you want paradise, work on yourself, work on your relationship with Allah. That's the key to start it. And you will get happiness in this world because when you realize that everything happens according to Allah and when he's given you the capacity to do something, the energy, the mental ability, the intellect, the, the opportunities, seize them, make use of them. Don't be lazy. Don't sit back and say, well, if Allah wants, it will happen. Allah gave you the capacity. Allah gave you everything. You needed to get up to do it and Allah would have opened the doors for you. But because you didn't, the doors remained closed. <clears throat> Imagine you want to marry someone and you just look at them every day and smile. I mean, what's going to happen? <laughs> Subhanallah. You've got to do something. Open your mouth. Go and see the father. Go and see someone else. Go and do something about it within your capacity. If after you've done everything about it, the doors were all closed and everything was closed and even the big black gate in the front became closed. Then you know what? You got to say Allah didn't want it and walk away. Never mind. Perhaps Allah will bless you with children better than the children you would have had had you gotten that in a way that these may see greater success than those. Who knows? Who knows? Only Allah knows. Do you know the future? The answer is no. Allah knows. So be happy. Just do your best and leave the rest in the hands of Allah. No matter what. You lost your job. You lost this. You lost that. Take it in your stride. Alhamdulillah. You'll have a happier home. You'll have a happier family. People are stressed. You know what? They can't show that stress to the people they work with because they're big guys there. They want to impress the girls at work. So they don't show them any bad habits. Nothing. But you go home. First thing. You start swearing. You start screaming. You start shouting. You start showing your real self. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. That's why the Prophet says, you know who's the best person? The one who's best to his family members, always the best. Do you know why? That person has shown the family that when I'm upset, I'm still a good guy. When I'm angry, I'm still a good guy. When I'm hungry, I'm still a good guy. When I've suffered a bad day, I'm still a good guy. When I've suffered a loss, I'm still a good guy. And I'm always a good guy. Then you're really a good guy. Subhanallah. But if you're a good guy outside the home and when you come back home, then you're not a good guy at all. Who knows better what type of a person you are? Those at home. So that's the reason why the Prophet ﷺ tells us, watch who you are. You want to really know who a man is, go ask his wife. You want to really know who a woman is, ask the husband. Or ask the family members. If they're honest enough, they'll tell you the truth. May Allah protect us. Amen. Be honest. Be upright. You lose a deal because of your honesty. No problem. Allah will give you baraka, baraka in it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us barakah. The meaning of barakah is blessings in simple English. You achieve blessings. What's the meaning of blessings? You have that contentment within you. You are delighted with the little that Allah has given you because so much has been achieved with that little Allah gave you rather than having the millions and the billions and you can't even see your left from your right. You're not even happy. You don't even know pillar to post. Blessings are snatched away when sins are committed. Remember that. You have the best spouse, the best person Allah chose for you as a husband or as a wife. You cannot see it because you know what? You're involved in other sins. So you're blinded. Blinded by whom? By shaitan. Your home is no longer happy because your relationship with Allah is weak. Your relationship with shaitan has become strong. Your relationship with shaitan becomes strong. You become blind. What happens to the blindness? The best wife on earth. I don't want to say, but perhaps I should. Should I? People would die to be married to your wife. And you're still alive. <laughs> May Allah grant us ease. You understand what I mean? People would say, how lucky is this guy? Wow. The, the sisters will say, this guy's got a really good husband, uh, wife. And you know what? We can't see that. We're blinded because there's some sin happening. Either there's haram income there. 
Either there's haram relationships there, either there's haram food there, either there's something wrong happening there, either there's no salah, there's no connection with Allah. So the coolness of the eyes will not be achieved because the heat of the sin has overtaken that coolness. This is why I started off by saying point number one, develop your relationship with Allah. People think, ah, oh, but that point, you know, everyone just talks about it. I'm being honest. The owner of the solution is Allah. People across the globe, I've had the opportunity of communicating and interacting with some non-Muslims who are very, very famous on earth. And they have told me, we have no contentment. We're looking for happiness. You know what keeps them ticking, clicking, some of them? The drugs, the alcohol, the intoxicants, the dirty life, the attention, etc. Not at all. A true believer knows that that is very temporary and very fake. It has a heat to it that would add to the flame rather than extinguish it. So, be calm. Concentrate on what Allah has given you. You have a job. Cherish it. Work hard. The money you've earned, when it is really earned, you'll have a happy family. You know why? Many of us, we have a job. Supposed to work from what time to what time here? Approximately 9 to? 9 to 5, mashallah. You're lucky. With us, it's 8 to 5. Okay? You guys have one hour knocked off. I think it's called Greenwich Mean Time, right? Okay, so you have one hour less, 9 to 5. And you have an hour for lunch, I guess, right? Lunch and salah, I hope, okay? Or is it salah and lunch? Either way, so long as the salah is there. But you get to work at, maybe, maybe you're a good guy, you get to work at 8. And then you're on your phone up to quarter past 8. And then when the boss walks out, you're playing your video games. And you're clocking it one after the other. And then when the guy comes back, you're ducking and diving. Before it used to be newspapers. Nowadays, there's no newspapers. You know why? Technology is taken over and we're doing everything. Subhanallah. And you know what? You're stealing from your boss's time. Are you allowed to do this? No. If you, if you are allowed, some bosses say, look, I give you some time to play video games. Anyone from amongst us who's a boss who allows that? <laughs> Mashallah! There's a brother who put his hand up. I think he must be uh, enjoying playing the game. You need someone to play with, right? <laughs> May Allah grant us ease. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So, to be very honest, that money, that income that came to you, technically you might think I worked for it and I earned it. But you know what? There will be some lack of some blessing because something went wrong within it that was not meant to be. You've actually stolen a portion of it. I know it might sound a bit hard, but it's a fact. Islam teaches us to look into even that much. Subhanallah. Even that much. You pinched from someone. You were not honest. You went to work. Work properly. Work hard. You know, when you've earned that money through your own sweat, trust me, you will realize its value, number one. Number two, Allah will allow you to have the bargains that are available in a way that you didn't imagine. I earned a thousand pounds and I bought goods that lasted me so long, there was another guy who spent 10,000 pounds on something similar and it was depleted before he knew. But Allah blessed me. May Allah grant us that blessing. How many of us, we earn a little, but end of the week, end of the month, we still have change. And how many of us earn a lot? End of the week, there's no more money left. You're oiling something haram. Check it out. There is something happening in the system that needs cleaning a little bit. And this is why we say, my brothers and sisters, something a lot of us don't talk about is the purification of the heart. You want true happiness, purify your heart. Look at your brother with love. Look at your sister with, mashallah, the genuine look. You don't want to attack and harm and hurt and hate everyone on earth. For what? These are your brothers and sisters, like it or not, subhanallah. They are your brothers and sisters. When someone is down, don't slap them further down. Think of how can I empower this person? How can I bring them up again? You bring someone up, Allah will bring you even higher, subhanallah. You want the help of Allah, help another person. Allah will help you. You want wealth, give something to someone. See how Allah returns it to you tenfold. He promises that to you. The problem is we can't part. We cannot part with a small amount of money. We cannot part with it. You know why? It's mine. That's why Allah says, Zakah is charity. If he wanted, he would have taken it without it coming to you. But Allah says, I'm going to give you a hundred. I just want to see if you can give me two pound fifty back. Change. I want to see it. Are you going to do it? A lot of us just keep the hundred in the pocket. That's it. 
Done. Zakat, yeah, I owe. I know. I owe. Somewhere. Work it out. Okay, I will. I will. No. Stop everything. Look at how sometimes people have a little bit of gold. Sometimes they have a little bit of savings. And they say, you know what? My money is all caught up. Even in a building. Even in something else. My money is caught up. How can I pay the zakat? And I always say, when you have a hundred dollar bill, or in this case, in this country, a 50 pound bill, you are going to need to break it to take out that two and a half or 175. You are going to need to break it anyway. So you will still have those few tens, maybe two twenties and a little bit of change. You will have. People say, but I don't want to break it. Uh -uh. Your heart should not be connected to the dunya to the degree that it compromises your akhirah because then you will lose the dunya as well. That dua, the Prophet ﷺ tells us, in fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, there are people who call out to Allah saying, Oh, our Lord, grant us goodness in this dunya, in this world, give us goodness. And give us goodness in the hereafter as well. Which means the two are connected. If Allah grants you that dua, what were you going to have? Goodness in this world, goodness in the hereafter. Allah's never ever kept true success in how much you have materially. That's why, when we are married and we want a happy home, never put pressure on your spouse regarding material items. Even if it's your own money, don't waste money beyond your proper capacity. Learn to adjust, to budget, to downsize, to downgrade, to prioritize when you're married, within the marriage, even if that's your own money. Learn to prioritize because you know what? The ability to spend in the correct manner for the correct things according to the right amount and to budget properly is already half of success. It's half of success. You know how to spend. You know how to draw the, the, or strike the balance between your income and expenditure. That's half of success. No need to borrow. No need to go and get unnecessary, you know, to indebt yourself unnecessary. That's, there's no need for that. If it's something necessary, it's another thing. But unnecessarily, we, we need this, we need that. You know, my brothers and sisters, many people are struggling in their marriages, in their families, because they are spending more than they earn. And they are too ashamed of the pressure of peers or the community to downgrade and downsize. No harm. You don't need to have the latest of everything. Never mind. Greet, greet people. With a smile, with tatty clothes, they will greet you back better than if it was a person who wore the best of clothing but had an attitude. Who would you prefer? I'd prefer a guy who, who greeted so well with such warmth and care and who really helped and assisted when they probably had tatty clothing than a guy who wore the latest Tom Ford suit. And you know what? He came up smelling before we could see him and when he walked past, he was just like... He had his nose up in the air. Gosh, may Allah protect us. So who do you want to be? Do we want to be a show for people? One of the biggest diseases is when we worry about others. Brother, worry about your own life. So many problems come about because people worry about what others are going to say. Brother, lead your life, the others will follow. I remember there was... And I have to bring this because it's to do with happiness in the family. A lot of people lose happiness because today what's happening is the young out here. If you're not married, please put up your hand. Guys, before we leave the masjid, most of you will be married, inshallah. <laughs> I see all the intelligent ones were saying, Ameen. <laughs> the others were just laughing. Subhanallah, say Ameen. It, it was a dua, you know. If we follow the proper system that of Islam that is so simple, free of racism, nepotism, tribalism, whatever elseism, and free of materialism, etc., etc., we would have been married a long time back. The problem with us is, I'm worried about this one. What will happen if I married, if I allow my child to marry that guy? What's my brother and my, my family and my community going to say? Trust me, they will say nothing. They will learn from you. They will talk for a little while until their children come up. I know of a marriage right now that's being blocked, but the guy is a lovely guy, same nationality, same whatever, same in so many different ways. But the folks are saying, you know what? If you, as a father of the girl, allows this to happen, what's going to happen to our daughters? They're also going to want to do the same. Well, what What's wrong? They will probably do something that you will have to hide your face regarding. 
This is honorable, man. Let it happen. Let it be. That's one of the reasons why we're not happy in our families is we're blocking what Allah did not block. Remember this. We're stopping what Allah did not stop. We're disallowing what Allah allowed. So how can you be happy? How are you going to have a happy home? Towards a happy home, you want to walk in that direction. Don't disallow what Allah allowed. If Allah allowed it, learn as a good Muslim. Like I started by saying your happiness is by developing your relationship with Allah. Wasn't that my first point? So if Allah said, allow this, you're saying, no, I won't. Well, then forget about your happiness. It's not going to come. If Allah says, look at this point and this point, you know, I can tell you something about marriage. You look at deen and khuluq. And the hadith says, if the deen is good, if the akhlaq are, are, are great and so on, and, the, and both of them would like to marry one another. If you're not going to let that happen, the same hadith says there will be fitna and fasad on earth. People don't want to hear that hadith. They don't even want to hear it. Sometimes religious people don't want to hear it. But the world out there is filled with adultery, fornication, whatever else it, it is. If you're trying to get into marriage, you need to know you're going to need to help people get out of whatever you may consider unacceptable. And to do that, you have to go back to Allah. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. A lot of the people are suffering. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands if you relate to what I've just said. Because I think we won't be able to count the hands. My brothers and sisters, it's a reality. Make things easy. Make halal easy. Allah will give you happiness. If you make halal easy, you've made haram difficult. And if you've made halal difficult, you've made haram easy. Don't let your pride and your ego drive you beyond what Allah has told you. Not at all. It shouldn't be there. And these words, people don't like to hear them. But if you want happiness in the family, and that's the topic today, you have to start off by understanding the children I have, the family I have, I'm just a member. Do you know something that makes me amazed? If Allah wanted, He could have created us singular, so you have no family. It's just me. If He wanted, He could have done that. We could have grown from the ground like the trees, you know. It's just me. I'm alone, singular. But Allah wanted us to feel better, to have a type of a life where we are empowered by those around us. They support us so we live and we can actually have interactions that are beneficial for us. Every interaction will either take you towards Jannah, which is paradise, or towards hellfire, which is Jahannam. Every interaction is one of the two. Every time something happens, ask yourself, if the Prophet ﷺ was here, what would he have told me? And if does Allah allow this or does he not allow it? How can I actually earn a reward? And how can I protect myself from the opposite as simple as that so each time something happens it's from Allah I was saying if Allah wanted he could have made us singular but Allah made us in order that we can earn closeness to him we've got people around us imagine you have a spouse you have children you have parents you have brothers you have sisters that family unit is so powerful so powerful so powerful that the hadith and the Quran tells us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards a person who mends broken family ties so immensely and intensely that they would earn Jannah by solving a problem in the home. But with us, we're looking for how we can split the house, break the house. And sometimes we are the problem and blaming someone else. We are the problem because we're not following what Allah said. And we're telling someone else, you're the problem because you know what? We're too proud to admit that we are wrong. House is broken. Not because of who you think broke it. Because of you. You are the culprit. That's what happens. May Allah safeguard us. That having been said, I must say, your parents are by far the most important people in your life. Remember that. Your parents, their value is such that you should involve them in all major decisions and make dua for them. That Allah guide them to help you and to guide you. They have worked a lot for you. They have struggled. You want a happy home. We, it cannot just be one sided. My beloved parents who are here. Be easy going. Be loving. Communicate with your children. Talk to them. Don't just attack them. Yesterday I had the opportunity of speaking. I felt it was one of the most powerful lectures I've delivered. That's what I felt. It, it, the way it came out was something that I wasn't expecting. To be honest, what I said in a nutshell is, 
every word that you utter and every action that you actually do has such a powerful impact upon those around you that you probably wouldn't realize. When you keep telling your child, you're stupid, you're ugly, you're thick, you're, you're, you're a failure, you're a flop, you're going to see, they begin to believe that. And as time passes, they react in a way that actually depicts what happened to them in their childhood with your bad comments. You did not empower them, you destroyed them. You're a child. You're gorgeous. You can do it. Oh, you came 10th in the class. Wow, there are 20 people. You did very, very well. Alhamdulillah. Mashallah. Did you enjoy it? Yes, you did. Wow, you did well. You only failed one subject. Amazing. You passed the other nine. Those are words of empowerment. Try and ask the people I know. You failed one. You're useless. Wasted my money. What about the other nine? Subhanallah. Pass them. Change attitudes. You go to school to enjoy yourself and to work as hard as your capacity allows. More than that, I can't. Not everyone is absolutely intelligent. Allah has shown us this. And I'm saying this for the second time in two days. Some of the wealthiest from amongst us here, ask them about their school life. <laughs> it will be an embarrassment. They'll tell you, I've been to grade seven. The other one will say, I, I failed. I was a dropout. The other one will say, okay, ask. The who's who on the globe, search for the richest people's names, check their, check their credentials in terms of academics. They received free doctorates in earning money later on in life, but they have nothing before that. Zero. They only made money. Allah's showing you the two are not really totally connected. It's got to do with how hard you work and how much you trust in Allah and what Allah really wills for you. May Allah grant us goodness. So work hard, develop your relationship with Allah by understanding the children are an amana. Your parents are also just an amana. Allah gave you the people around you in order for you to have some company on earth. And that's why on the day of judgment, when you arrive, you'll be alone to give your accounts. وَلَقَدْ جِئْتُمُونَا فُرَادَا كَمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ أَوَّلَ مَرَّةً وَتَرَكْتُمْ مَا خَوَّلْنَاكُمْ وَرَاءَ ظُهُورِكُمْ وَمَا نَرَى مَعَكُمْ شُفَعَاءَكُمُ الَّذِينَ زَعَمْتُمْ أَنَّهُمْ فِيكُمْ شُرَكَاءَ What a powerful verse Allah is describing the day of judgment when you came in front of us all alone just like when we first made you all alone you know before you were born where were you in the womb what happened to you then you came onto the earth and allah says we gave you a lot of people around you and things became nice you got oh my mom my dad my this my that my that that's all allah's allah's gonna take you back allah says now you're back with us all alone where we don't see with you all of those who used to be around you. Where are they? Gone. Allah says chopped, gone. This is you and I. So Allah's given you a favor of those around you to, for you to earn a reward. Or if you do the wrong thing, you're going to achieve the opposite. Don't do the wrong thing. It's an amana. Can I prove to you that your children actually do not totally belong to you? Your parents actually do not totally belong to you. You're allowed to say my mother, my father for a short while, for a while. But let me tell you, when you die, when you hear that someone passed away, what's the first thing you say? Can you say it? <laughs> inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. What does it mean? We belong to Allah and unto Allah is our return. Subhanallah. Your own child, if you had total you know, ownership of that child and it was your own property. You would have been able to have more say when the child was about to die. But you had no say. The child died when Allah had the say. You didn't have a say. The child was given to you as Allah willed, not as you willed. So whose child is it in actual fact? Meaning who is the owner of that particular person? It's Allah. Subhanallah. Allah lends you. Allah gives you. Some he doesn't give. Some he gives only females, some only males, some both. All of that is a test of Allah. Pass it and you will get it. The connection that you have sometimes between yourselves and your family members is such that you make a dua. Oh Allah, gather us in Jannah. Bring us together in Jannah. Unite us in paradise. Why? Because Allah gave you a good time here on earth with each other. 
So you're worried about, you know, being together in Jannah. I always say, my brothers and sisters, worry about getting to Jannah. Once you're there, whatever you want, you will get. Anything you want, you get it there. A lot of us say, you know, inshallah, in Jannah, I'll have this. And I say, do you even know that you're going to Jannah? Subhanallah. <laughs> Are you even, inshallah, we will. Say, Amin. 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 May Allah grant us Jannah. Amin. Without reckoning. You know, we're all, we're all human beings. We falter. We try. We, we love Allah. That's why we're seated here in His house, by the way. When you're sitting at someone's house, it means you're close to them. If I was sitting at your house, what does it mean? I just came, I sat here for one hour and I'm okay. I picked up something from the shelf and I did whatever. Imagine someone comes into your house, they go into the kitchen, turn on the little... It means they're close to you, right? Come closer to Allah. You come into the masjid, you sit, you feel cool, you're relaxed. Don't cause a problem in the house of Allah. Don't start shouting and fighting here in the house of Allah. This is the house of Allah. The fact that you're here, He loves you. You're trying. What do you want? Yeah, I, I, I know, I love Allah. Yes, I'm a human, I falter, I've made a few mistakes. But that's not, that's not really me. That's actually, you know, a mistake that happened. I sought the forgiveness of Allah. I know I'm not supposed to be doing X, Y, Z. Well, you're heading in the right direction by the will of Allah. Be stronger and stronger. As time passes, get closer and closer to Allah. That's what will achieve the success for you. So my brothers and sisters, that happiness in the home, that happy home, that happy family, it comes when we realize and understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be first. In our dress code, improve it. Ask yourself, is this pleasing to my maker? If it is, mashallah, Allah will please you today, tomorrow, the next day. And it's not going to be easy. You know, when Allah says, you do this, you'll get paradise. That thing cannot be such a simple task. It's going to be quite tough. Because what you're getting in return is huge. Very big. You know, Allah kept five salah a day. It is amazing. It is unique, subhanallah. The fajr that you have is at a time when sometimes, and some of the other prayers, a time when others might say, hey, it's a little bit awkward, you know. Astaghfirullah, it's not awkward. It's Allah. You really want Jannah. You've got to pay a bit. If I offered you, subhanallah, an amount of money for a job, we would do it. Depending on how big the amount is. Allah's offering you something that is bigger than anything you can imagine and you can't even just get up, pray and go back to sleep if you really want. Do that. For Allah, see your family, see your home becoming a happy home because you put Allah at the beginning. You, then, the second part of the narration, the one was develop your relationship with Allah, the other one was your character and conduct because that Allah has created everything else, your relationship with all those things, watch it. Develop it. That's your Jannah. Just those two things. How you are with Allah and how you are with everything else. That's it. Your Jannah. Sounds nice and easy, isn't it? Wallahi, you've got to work on your heart to start with. You've got to cleanse yourself. Take out the jealousy. Take out the malice. Take out the envy. Take out the love. You know, everyone loves nice things. But when that love for worldly items becomes so high, you want it by hook or crook. And both hooking and crooking are not allowed. Right? It's not allowed. You can't crook. I mean, I want this. What am I going to do? I'm going to pinch it. When we were young, there was a saying, beg, borrow or steal. You know what? You can't get to steal. Come on. And begging is not dignified, especially when you are a person who's able. Allah has given you capabilities. When you see a person begging and they're normal, big fit. Imagine, have you ever seen a guy like big muscles and from the gym and he's begging? I'd give him a slap. Well, actually I won't. He might slap me back, you know. <laughs> but my brothers and sisters, develop. let's develop ourselves. Many of us are lacking in character. We are Muslims. We are an embarrassment to Islam a lot of the times. We, our dealings are not honest. And then we're looking for happiness. Sometimes the way we talk to people full, full of swear words. I promise you we can eradicate that. We can do without it. It doesn't need to be there. You want a happy home? Use respectful terms. Talk to people with love, with care, with respect in your home. Listen to them. Help them through their problems. Your child might come to you and tell you the most absurd thing on earth. That's your child. That's your amana. You need to help the child. You need to have hope. You need to understand. It's easy for someone else to tell you, excommunicate the child, kick the child out of the home. And wallahi, when it happened to them, they didn't do that. They did the opposite. 
Why were we foolish to listen to someone else? It's my home. May Allah grant us ease. You, we want happiness. We're, look, we're searching for contentment. I promise you, Islam has come with so much of ease. A lot of the people actually don't follow it. They think they do. That's why we say, don't judge a book by its cover. Sometimes you see people looking, mashallah, tabarakallah. They look like they're extremely pious. Subhanallah. And then Allah tests everyone with different types of tests. When Allah tests you with certain tests, it's on your level. You're going to need to ask yourself, you know what? This is a test from Allah. I need to pass it. It doesn't mean because I look outwardly pious that suddenly I'm going to pass all my tests. Then shaitan attacks your heart by doing what? Messing it. Becoming dirty. You start belittling people. That's why when you see a person who's, who's really close to Allah, one of, the, one of the clearest signs of the closeness to Allah is that your heart is softened. You feel mercy towards others. That's from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ It is because of the mercy of Allah that you are lenient towards everyone. You're not hard-hearted. You're not harsh. That's a sign of the mercy of Allah. When you are really close to Allah, you become a soft person. In, in, in the sense that you care for others. You have mercy. You look at others as, mashallah, good people. You try and look for the good in them. Help them up on their feet. When you notice something bad, you care for them. You speak to them in a nice way. You really want them to correct that. But when you see yourself beginning to fulfill salah, beginning to become a practicing Muslim, if your heart begins to dislike all other people, shaitan has gotten a stronger grip of you than he had prior to you having thought that you were, you were practicing. You follow what I'm saying? It happens to a lot of young brothers and sisters. We start practicing after 20 years of misguidance, 40 years, 50 years of misguidance. We start practicing. And that very moment we start practicing, we look at our own bodies as people who are total goners. But you were a goner just yesterday. You see? Where is the mercy? If it took you 50 years to move, it might take them 60. It might take them 70. You want them to move in five minutes. Brother, come here or you're astray. It's over. Take it easy. Talk to them nicely. If a man turns to Allah or a woman upon his or her deathbed, it's not too late for as long as the gargara hasn't come to them. Just prior to their, their death, they made the tawbah and they said, the Prophet ﷺ told his uncle on his deathbed, Qul kalimatan laka biha al Oh my uncle, just say this shahada. And I'll, I'll, I'll fight your case on the day of judgment. Subhanallah. That was near the end. So even if someone spent their entire life in a specific way, it doesn't mean they ended that way. England was playing New Zealand the other day. Was it New Zealand? No, it wasn't. <laughs> it was South Africa. At the beginning, who was winning? England was winning. They were excited. Everyone was, yay, home, coming home. Subhanallah. What happened? The beginning of the match means nothing. You could have started your life in any way. How bad you were at the beginning means nothing. When the whistle was blown, what was the score? Sorry, I know it's embarrassing. It's okay. You don't need to say it, right? But what I mean is, in your life it's the same. You can be as terrible as you were for 50 years, 50 minutes in other words, right? Of the match. Last few minutes, you started one try, two tries, three tries, a good kick here, another good kick there. And what happened? Woo, we won. We picked up the cup. The same thing happens in our lives. You started off maybe in a bad way. Don't lose hope. Keep on working. Keep on trying. You know, I was watching. I won't take the names of these countries because some of them, subhanAllah, they might be offended. But there was a team losing 50-0. Right? You think it's a joke? It's not. And I was... Surprised to see how enthusiastically they were playing as though they were going to make a change. <laughs> Subhanallah, they should have just told the guys, we're sitting here, just make it more, break a record, 100-0, it's okay. But they were so enthusiastic, they were playing like they couldn't believe it. Subhanallah. That's motivation for me, man. Subhanallah, no matter what, no matter how bad you're doing, just keep going. One day, inshallah, who knows, you hit the jackpot. May Allah grant us ease. You win the match. 
That's what life is. Don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah. You're a good person, don't you think? Who thinks that they're really so evil and not worth even living? If anyone's made you think that way, Allah tells you that's wrong. We are the ones who gave you life. Use that life to come close to us because ultimately the whistle shall be blown. You're going to come back to us anyway. When you come back, you did your best. You know, Allah's mercy is such that when we get back to Allah and He sees us, questions us, for as long as we worshipped Him alone, for as long as we tried our best, Allah says, I may wipe out through my mercy whatever you have done in your life and still give you paradise without reckoning if I wish so. That's Allah. Why lose hope in the mercy of Allah? My brothers and sisters, that happy home will not be a happy family if it's void of prayer, if it's void of salah, if it is void of obedience to Allah. Try your best. Speak with respect. Spend time in the home. Sit with your family members. Talk to them. Help them. Empower them. Say good words to them. And that's the way we will be improving. Become a role model in your own home. Help the people. Ask yourself what they want to achieve. Is it okay in the eyes of Allah? Yes. Let it happen. I will stand. I'm the man of the house. Subhanallah. You know what? Those of us who have children, it's a big responsibility to get them married. Wallahi. One of the biggest downfalls in the house. People are saying, you know, I've got children. They were so good. They were all lovely. Mashallah, my daughter, my son, etc. What a lovely person. They grew old. They became such. Now the guy is 25 years old. He hasn't ever, ever done anything wrong within the home. But you know what? He wants to marry someone totally out of our culture, our caste. So that's the first thing they're doing wrong in your life. Meet the person. Who do they want to marry? Meet them. Talk to them. See them. Give them time of the day. Respectfully. They may just be the parent through whom you will become a grandfather or mother. Do you understand? Meet them. Talk to them. Don't think like, subhanallah, the world has not progressed. It has. It's moved in leaps and bounds. The globe has changed and it is changing every minute. If you're not going to live up to it, you're going to have a very, very sad life. Within the confines of what Allah has taught, you will progress. You need to change your thinking. You need to understand there's diversity on earth. Some of our best friends don't belong to our culture or race. And they are very close friends to ask. Ask yourself, will you allow your child to marry the child of this person? If the two of them really want to marry, some people say, no way. No way. Not over my dead body. <laughs> well, then I will say, well, then over your alive body. Subhanallah. <laughs> Subhanallah. Yeah, that's what it is. You have to learn. You have to understand. We are suffering. I have been facing these cases for many years and I don't know what to do about it anymore. I have people who are friends of mine. They don't see the light. And I say, my brother, do you know what? Learn to think, man. Learn to think the world has changed. Everything has happened. Perhaps this person will be the best for you. You're living in an environment that is cosmopolitan. The whole dunya is here. How can you be so narrow-minded? That's why there's no happiness in your home. And some people will swear, no, they can do it after I die. But for what? I want to tell you something else. You know, I've seen people who don't mind their kids not being married. But you're not going to marry who you want. Subhanallah. Like I said, bring your parents into your confidence. They are important people in your lives. Talk to them from the very beginning. Don't do everything and then come and try and halalize things at the end of the day. You know? The guy says, I'm going to ask my dad. So I ask him, what if your dad says no? He says, well, I'm still going to do it. Well, then why are you bothering asking your dad? You see what I'm saying? That's your father. Listen to what he has to say. So while I am telling the parents to go easy on their children, I'm also telling the children, understand who's your father. Understand who's your mother. It's a balance. I can't just give it one way. Because sometimes the others are wrong. Sometimes your father has a valid reason. Look, this guy, you're blinded. You're blinded. You cannot see. This is what it is. A, B, C. If the man has a valid point, it's okay. 
I've had some cases like that where the father says, look, this is what it is. Is it okay? And I have to be quiet because obviously I can't guarantee happiness. I can't guarantee contentment. I've got to say, look, I don't know. Make dua. See, <laughs> may Allah forgive us. My brothers and sisters, it brings me to a very, very powerful point. How many of us call out to Allah and make dua, supplicate to Him to give us a happy family? MashaAllah, there are a few hands that have come up. Call out to Allah regularly. Oh Allah, grant us happiness, grant us contentment. Oh Allah, guide me. Oh Allah, make what makes you happy easy for me to fulfill. Make what makes you angry or what displeases you easy for me to stay away from. Make, call out to Allah. Allahumma kfini bi halalika an haramika wa ghnini bi fadlika amman siwak. Powerful dua. Oh Allah, make halal so sufficient for me that I don't need to go into haram and I won't go into haram. And grant me independence through your virtue such that I never need to beg from anyone else. What a powerful dua. It was made by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Yet he never ever would have ever committed some haram. Never. But that dua is for us to learn. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, best of creation, most noble of all prophets of Allah, highest in rank. Why did he make that dua? To teach us, that's it. To teach us. Ask Allah, oh Allah, make me happy with halal so I don't have to go in haram. Ask Allah every day, oh Allah, make me happy with halal so that I don't have to go to haram. The next time you think of haram, Allah will create an obstacle. Something will happen. You're going towards haram, you have a puncture. You're going towards something big haram, you made an accident. When you made an accident, what should you say? Alhamdulillah. Why? If you're a true Muslim, you know where you were going, right? You know, what did Allah do? I love you. You're not going to do that. So what are you going to do? I'll make you have an accident. Allahu Akbar. Are you witnessing? That's Allah's power. That's why we say not every negative that we look at as negative is actually negative. Sometimes it's the most positive thing that you could ever have had. Thank Allah for it. Allah kept you away from something. And that's the power of Allah. So make dua. Call out to Allah. At the end of Surah Al-Shu'ara, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in fact, it's Surah Al-Furqan. The end of Surah Al-Furqan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about certain prayers that are made by those who are close to Allah. One of them is, رَبَّنَا هَبْ لَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنْ وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا O oh Allah, O oh our Rabb, O oh our Rabb, Grant us, we're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Hab lana, grant for us, from our spouses and our children, our family members, those who are the coolness of our eyes. When you look at them, you're so happy. When you look at them, you just don't get full. Mashallah, you need to look again. You need to look again, subhanallah. Imagine a guy married for 20 years, following his wife, just looking at her face and smiling. La ilaha illallah. That is real. That is real. MashaAllah. What's wrong with it? When you do something like that, it's actually an ibadah. You made someone feel worthwhile. With, as they develop the wrinkles on their faces, you adored them more. You made them feel worthwhile. You know what? If she is aging, you're aging too. SubhanAllah. You're aging too. You need to look. You need to appreciate. You need to acknowledge. You need to say good words. Try it out at home today. And you can invite us for the walima tomorrow. <laughs> what I mean is, you know, it will be so appreciated. A lot of us lack romance in our homes. The Prophet ﷺ talks about it. You know, I've had people come to complain saying, you know what, we haven't been intimate in two years. And I'm like, gosh, man, you know, I wonder what's going on here. You have to make an effort, my brothers, my sisters. Do you know the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, when they were told, fi budu'i ahadikum sadaqatan, to be intimate with your spouse is an act of worship and an act of charity. They were also looking and they wanted to ask a question. Subhanallah. They said, oh messenger, 
حياتي احدنا شهوته ويكون له في ذلك اجر يعني يو نو يو نو يو مين ايم جوينغ تو جست فولفيل ماي سيكشوال ديزاير اند ايم جوينغ تو جيت ا ريوارد فور ات يو نو There was no embarrassment. I'm, I'm actually honored to be speaking in the house of Allah about what the messenger, peace be upon him, said. He said, hey, if you were to put your organ in haram, would you get a sin? They said, yes. Well, if you put it in halal, you'll get a big reward. There was no embarrassment. He spoke about it. Ibadah. One day, may Allah grant this man Jannah, he passed away. One of the Imams in one of the masajid back at home in South Africa. The Imam was slightly late for Salatul Fajr. Slightly late, a few, like a few minutes. Now you know what happens with the Imams. Normally you have the people behind their role. Hey, you late, you late. He got up, he said, brothers, don't, don't pick on me. I was engaged in another act of worship. <laughs> He says, I've come from ibadah to ibadah. <laughs> It's a fact. And you know what? Those who understood knew what he was saying. They, and he said it. And nobody dared say a word. From that day, he was the hero of all the youngsters. <laughs> They said, the man is old, but is not cold. <laughs> Allah grant us each. We're talking of a happy family. Wallahi, I've told you. I've given you quite a bit. Obviously, we won't be able to say everything, but we've spoken about a lot, including intimacy. It's very important with the right people. Many people commit haram, and for that reason, they are blinded about their own spouses. You know, when we say the I love yous and I adore yous, and we send these messages that we're embarrassed to show our own spouses because we're sending them to the wrong people. Wallahi, if you were to use half of those haram messages in a halal way, you'd have the happiest family. Follow what I'm saying. And as we grow older, say it more. Appreciate your spouse. They sacrificed a lot for you. Subhanallah. I remember the guy. The guy saying, well, you know, my wife is a bit out of shape. Subhanallah. <laughs> Brother, you look like a pear. <laughs> you worried about what your wife looks like. Are you worried about what you look like? It's like the guy telling his wife, you know what? Your belly is a bit big. She says, I know. I'm about to be a mother. What about yours? It's big as well. He says, well, I'm about to be a father. <laughs> La ilaha illallah. May Allah grant us ease. We must take pride in what we look like. Yes, we must. For our own health, our own goodness. Yes, the spouse included yours. You wouldn't like, you know, uh, to waste yourself. But at the same time, you need to sometimes understand it takes a while. Some people, perhaps, they've given you four, five, three, two children, one after the other, subhanallah. And then when the children came, you know what? You were disinterested in this woman. Or disinterested completely for what? That's when the, the ibadah comes into play. Think about why the Prophet ﷺ said that to us. Imagine I'm sitting and thinking that must have been Masjid al-Nabawi. It must have been some much more sacred place, Makkah or Medina. It can't have been a third place. It was probably Medina. In fact, if we look back at it, it was in Medina. Imagine, they were saying that. What was that all about? The ingredients of a happy family. Towards a happy family. You need to know. Say good words to your children. Tell them how much you love them. No matter how old you are. I had a 65 year old uncle come to me in one country that I, I said, tell your children you love them. He came, he said, how can I do it? I haven't done it in so many years. I've never done it. I said, go and try uncle. Go and try uncle. Just tell them, look, I just want to tell you guys, I love you. I really love you. You mean so much to me. Subhanallah. I was hoping that I was there the following day to see the face of that uncle, but I wasn't. I wasn't. I would have loved to come back with what happened thereafter. Perhaps one day. But we need to say that. Especially this age, there are others who are saying it in a fake way. When you say it in a genuine way, you've actually filled a void. Then your children will be able to pick up the fake from the genuine. Pick it up. But you've never said it. So what happens? The first person who says it, <gasps> Skipped a beat. The guy is just using you, man. The guy is just using you and you skipped a beat. You know why you skipped a beat? That's it. Subhanallah. Because 
You've never heard those words from anyone. And you're like, oh. but he's been telling that to all the girls he sees. <laughs> then what? They've skipped beats so much that had you added those skipped beats, people would have died of heart attacks. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, may Allah grant us goodness and happiness. Amen. I've spoken for exactly an hour. And I ask Allah to accept from us a few words. I pray that whatever we've said, number one, we develop our relationship with Allah, with the Quran, with Salah, with, with goodness. Try and do things that please Allah. Not just one day, two days. It's a determination. It's a dedication. You'll see, you purify your life. Islam has a lot of rules, a lot of regulations. Do you know why? It wants to purify you, keep you as clean as possible, as happy as possible. And inshallah, it has a lot of goodness. Definitely. And so... Follow it as best as you can. You will see the goodness coming. Learn to respect others. Learn to respect the people. Your own family members. Talk to them. Communicate with them. Open your heart to them. Help them. Help them to achieve anything they want to achieve. For as long as it's not haram, let it be. Allah will guide. Allah will open the rest of the doors of the entire ummah. Today we are struggling. Each one is pulling towards himself. And that's it. Let's learn to be together, care for each other. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanakallahum wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.